In a previous video, I demonstrated a fast-to-make enclosure used in book conservation called a phase box. Phase boxes are common in archives and institutional collections which often have closed stacks, not accessible to visitors. But there are also rare and valuable books stored in context, libraries in historical buildings, for instance. Visitors to an historic house don't want to see bookshelves filled with phase boxes. They want to see books. I have some examples of legal type bindings with some age. These are half leather bindings with cord supports. You can see the wear is on the tail edges of the boards and outside of the boards, especially at the joints. Being thick books, the texts have sagged with time. This is worse in modern books because machines aren't very good at backing. A compromise way of providing some protection to these books is a book shoe. This is an enclosure that is open at the spine and head. It also has a piece of board the thickness of the tail square in the base which supports the text block. There isn't a lot published on making book shoes, but each of the articles state that the book shoe was developed by Nicholas Pickwode while consultant at the National Trust in England. The commercial design was developed by Christopher Clarkson, then at West Dean College, Chichester, England, and Anthony Keynes, Trinity College, Dublin, Ireland. So from the same gang that I talked about in the phase box video. Like the phase box, there are numerous designs for book shoes. The one I'll demonstrate is my favourite because I think it is the simplest, easiest to make and meets the requirements most people want of a book shoe. There is a two-piece variation which I think is only useful if using thicker materials where the thickness of the material needs to be factored into the design. The other important variation has stiff sides and a closure such as a piece of tape which is tied over the spine. This version has been developed for the protection of limp vellum covered books. The material used is usually fluted or corrugated conservation board which can accommodate the closure tape, thus avoiding any impression into the book. I start by measuring the book. I need the height, the width, the thickness when it's slightly compressed, and the tail square, minimum distance between the boards, and length that won't interfere with the headbands. This last bit will be clearer as you see it made. As I mentioned, this design is easy to make. It's made from a single piece of card stock. I'm using 20 point card, which is about 0.6 millimeters thick. I cut the card to size, which is twice the book width plus the thickness, by the book height plus the thickness. I make crease lines with a sharp bone folder as shown in the diagram, and cut out the small piece of card at the tail that's not required. I then fold along the crease lines, fold in towards the crease lines and the inside of the creases should be sharp with a slight bump on the outside.
At this point it's good to check that you haven't made a mistake by checking the book fits. I then cut a piece of neutral coloured book cloth to make a tab which can be used to pull the book from the shelf. This is a Daz special edition as I haven't seen it in any of the published designs. I make it so it extends about an inch or 25 millimetres. I'll build up the support for the text block from some different thickness materials so that it matches the thickness of the lower square, which is 4mm in this case. The material that will be in contact with the book is some 100% cotton mat board left over from my picture framing project. Once I've laminated the materials together, I'll give it a quick nip in the press. While it's in the press, I'll glue the cloth tab in place. The size of the text support must fit inside the boards and not interfere with the end bands. The boards also curl in at the tips. This is common in old books. I'll take a couple of nicks off the rear corners to avoid any interference. The support is then glued in place and the base glued together to close the shoe.
The last step is to round the sharp corners of the opening. This can be done by cutting around a coin or by using a corner rounding machine, which I'm sure everyone has. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. As always, I really appreciate you hitting the big thumbs up button. If you're able and want to, you can support the making of more videos like this through Patreon or with a one-off contribution, and the details are in the description below. To find videos I've made on specific topics or other projects, the best place to go is the DAS Bookbinding Video Guide. It's the index to the channel, and there is a link in the description below. If you want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button and select the notification bell. Until next time, cheerio.